In the previous episode of Computer Train, I talked about all things with the number 10, and we are going to continue that theme with this show. So I'm going to start off with a trivia question. Who lives at 10 Downing Street? Anybody? That would be the Prime Minister of England, as opposed to the President of the United States, who lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. So I'm probably going to get a history show now. But until then, climb aboard and welcome to another episode of Computer Train. It's time for Computer Train, the weekly TV program that trains you how to use your computer. With your host, El Paso Community College faculty member Russ Myers. So as I alluded to, we were talking about all things with the number 10. And more specifically in the previous show, we talked about Microsoft's newest operating system, Windows 10. So we discussed how we got to Windows 10, and I briefly had some time to show you some new features of Windows 10, and I want to continue that theme. As I've been using Windows 10, one of the things that I've noticed, it reminds me of maybe being like a driver in an automobile. The vast majority of the things that I need for my automobile are within my touch, within my fingertips. And that's kind of what I like about Windows 10. In the previous version, Windows 8.1, that we've done on the show, you had to go over here to the app side for the apps. You might have to go to the desktop to get this. You have to go over here to get that. In Windows 10, they've kind of really done a, a nice job of bringing it all together for us. So I want to review a couple of the things that I discussed last time and then show you some nice new things in Windows 10. First thing we're going to review is the Start button and this search. So for most of you, if you remember from the previous show and what happened from Windows 8 to Windows 8.1, is in Windows 8 they took the Start menu away. And that caused a big ruckus throughout, uh, basically throughout the world. People wanted that Start menu. They were familiar with how it worked. So in Windows 8.1, they quasi brought it back. But now in Windows 10, they fully brought it back, and it's really full featured. So I want to show you some of the things that we discussed last time. So the first thing is that you'll notice it brings the app side from Windows 8.1 into the Start menu. So in Windows 8.1, you had to go to the app side to get your apps. Now when you install new apps, they're going to be incorporated into the Start menu, which is really nice. But also from here, you can get to any of your desktop apps. So once again, instead of going over here and going over here, you're in one place, which is really nice. A couple of things that we discussed is you can create your own groups with these icons. The other thing I wanted to show you in Windows 8.1 that I showed you that you could size the apps or the tiles. Remember, these are called tiles. And the ones that update are called live tiles. Okay, so you can do the same thing over here. And you do it exactly the same way. What you're going to do is any tile that you want to resize, you right click it and you're going to come into the resize menu. Okay, depending on the particular app or the particular tile that it is, it'll have various resize shapes. Usually it's a wide, small, medium, and then a large, uh, depending on the app and the system that you're using. The other thing that I want to show you right from this menu is this unpin from taskbar and unpin from start. So we discussed that also in Windows 8.1, except now it's all localized into one place. So this is where you have the idea where if there's an application that you're going to run frequently, you don't want to have to search all over the place for it. So those apps that I constantly run, like for instance, when the first thing I come into work, I check my email. So I want my email icon to be on my taskbar. So all you need to do is find that application, right click on it, and you're going to look for pin to taskbar. Okay, so the particular one that I clicked on is already pinned there. Don't forget, if you want to learn computers, you have to learn what things are called and what they are, what they do. That's the conceptual part. So this was the taskbar, and here are some icons that I have pinned. Okay, perhaps you don't run those applications absolutely all the time, but there are some that you frequently want to go to. So then what you would want to do is maybe pin them to the Start menu. If you do that, they're going to show up right here. Okay, so you can see instead of flipping back and forth with sides, just with the taskbar and the Start menu, I can get to dozens, literally, of applications very quickly. Then another nice feature they have right here, they have any applications that I've used in the past. Okay, so these are frequent applications. And then if you still can't find them, then you have this icon. So this was like in Windows 8.1. What you're going to do right here is this lists every single app from A to Z. So we did have this feature in Windows 
except again it wasn't localized. Okay, so as we look at this list, I have some in the letter A like Access, Camera, Excel. Okay, all my apps are right here. This list includes desktop apps like Microsoft Office and then also apps you, that you might install from the um, store. All right, finally, you have this, which I really like. This little search box right here, by the way, now has a name. The name for this one, search, like most of you, if you have maybe you perhaps have an Apple, you have the Siri feature, so you can ask Siri a question. In Windows, this text box is called Cortana. It has the same features. You can click in there and type, and then you can also use uh, some audio um, questions if you want. Now I'm going to try to do a little bit of both. So let's say I've, I've looked all over my computer and I can't find it. I'm not going to search that long, by the way. I'm going to let Cortana help me find something. So I need to find PowerPoint. So I can click in there. I'm going to start typing some letters. You don't necessarily have to type the entire word. So I just type some of the letters of PowerPoint. And you see that here's where you have to understand terminology again. Okay, so we have desktop app. It also can find some things related to PowerPoint on the App Store. And it also go to web pages related to those words. And finally, if I had any files on my computer that had that word, it would also find files. So it immediately finds lots of things that I need, including the application. Once I find the application, if this is something I'm going to run frequently, right click on it, add it to the taskbar, or add it to the start menu so you can quickly find it. I really like that search feature being right there, nice and handy when I want to find some things. In many previous shows related to the operating system, I've shown you how to change options. And then as the operating systems we went, we did a show on uh, Windows 7, then we did a show on Windows X.1, uh, 8.1. Now I'm doing an operating system of Windows 10. In Windows 10, it's much easier for ordinary users to make setting changes. Usually that was things that most people didn't know, and you had to kind of ask somebody uh, to make those changes for you. I think in Windows 10, it's going to be a little bit easier. First of all, it's easier to find. So in your Start menu also, you have a Settings button. So if you remember from a previous show, I showed you that kind of um, ratchet icon. That's related to your settings. So it's right there. We can click on it, and we can make several different changes to our computer. Okay, and some of these we've used in the past. I showed you in one show how to connect Bluetooth devices, so there it is. Uh, connecting to a network or Wi-Fi, so there's the icon. You can change your system, like I, in a previous show I changed my desktop to show, show Pittsburgh with all of those six Super Bowl trophies. So very easy to get to those, and instead of before in the past you had to get to this item called control panel, and then from control panel you had to know where to go. So now, that's still available to you, but now the most common items that are uh, for everyday users, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, system changes, adding a printer, those are all nice and neat in this menu. Even better than that, they now have this thing called the Action Center, which we kind of had in Windows 8.1. If you have a computer that allows touchscreen where you can do swiping, it's very easy to bring in the Action Center, and I demonstrated that on my Surface. You just swipe from the right side. Here I have a desktop without a touch screen, so I want to make sure we know where the icon is. It's in the lower right of the taskbar, so let's take a moment to find that. Okay, down here to the bottom right. And that is going to take us to something called the Action Center. So it's pretty much the same thing. It has those settings, but in the Action Center, what it also does is in the Settings button that I went to, it has them grouped under one icon. What the Action Center does that I like a little bit better is it breaks up the icons individually with most of the common items. So you see here we have some quick icons that will do that. If you're on a laptop like a Surface or something like that, it will have additional icons related to that computer. For instance, it will have the Wi-Fi icon. It might have the Bluetooth icon. Uh, you can see here, let's see if it has it. No. In a laptop, it might have the airplane uh, icon where you have to turn the Wi-Fi off on the airplane. Uh, so it'll have additional icons, which again, what I like about it the best 
is it's immediately there and I can turn things without having to figure out where to go everywhere. It'll also have some notifications here about things important to keep the health of your computer. Uh, so if you have a touch screen, you just swipe with your finger from the right side and that opens up the Action Center. If you're on a desktop environment, then you have that button that's available. Once again, really nice to get to things that the common user is going to need and we can get to it very quickly. One of the other things that I like that's really handy that I've started to use is related to our file management utility, which is File Explorer. Now, I've done several examples of File Explorer. File management is a very important skill if you're going to be a computer user. So one of the things that I do is on my flash drive or my hard drive, there's always files that I constantly go to. I believe one of the examples that I used in a previous show is my grades file. Every time that I grade papers or do projects, I need to go to my grades file and I, may, I need to make changes. So it's actually buried pretty far down onto my flash drive. So I showed you how to use the favorites. And so we have a little bit, we have the favorites and we also have another feature of that. So once again, in our start menu, another nice feature we have is first of all, there's the file explorer icon right away. That's also pinned to my uh, taskbar and I've also discussed, just to remind you, in previous episodes, you can do the Win key, the Win key, and the E, Win key E. That works all the way back to probably Windows 95. Okay, but if you don't click on the icon, notice that there is a submenu right here. And it's the submenu that I've been using. So if I click on the submenu there, one of the things that I like is this pinned items. Okay, so what you can do here is if you go to a particular file, once you find that file, once you can right-click on it and you can pin it. So then, when I need to go to that file, I don't have to open up File Explorer, I don't have to find favorites, I don't have to navigate to that. All I have to do is click on that icon in the menu and it'll go straight to that location. So I found that saves a lot of time. So one of the things you can see that I'm discussing is it's trying what we're doing with Windows 10 is it's bringing all these independent things and bringing them into one location for the most common things that people do day to day. So if you need to get to a file, instead of running File Explorer and then clicking the file or finding it, now it brings an icon which connects to that file immediately. And I've been using that extensively, especially my grading file or folders for my classes that I use day in and day out. All right, so now what I want to do is introduce you to the new uh, web browser in Windows 10. First of all, it's not called Internet Explorer, which we commonly refer to as IE. The new name of their browser is called Microsoft Edge. Obviously, as a browser, it has some of the th same things as all browsers and address and all those types of things. But it has some pretty cool new features, once again, that I've started to like. A lot of times, Microsoft does things that it's like whoop de doo uh, Nobody really cares about that, or at least I don't or they come out with a new feature that, eh, it's okay, but I don't see how I would use it. But in Windows 10, I've started to notice that I'll use lots of these uh, tools. So on my taskbar, I have the new icon for Microsoft Edge. So I'm going to go to there. All right, so the first thing I want to describe here is some buttons that you will not see on some of the other browsers, which are up here on the top right. Okay, and I'm going to demonstrate some of these in a second. This top right one with the circles, that is a pretty common icon in a couple of different programs where you can share things. And usually sharing means social media. So from, uh, from Microsoft Edge, did you notice I almost said Internet Explorer because I'm still not used to the new word. Microsoft Edge, you can share the web page through Facebook and through Twitter which is pretty simple to do. You can also email a web page to someone directly, so I'm going to try to do some quick examples of that. Here we have a new tool that's pretty cool. Before I share it, I can actually turn my mouse pointer into a writing utensil, and I can write on the web page first and then share it. That's really helpful for me as a professor. I can show students specific things that I want them to look at and not just have to describe it you know, in an email. I can just circle it, which makes it a little bit easier. Here we have an icon where we can do a variety of things. One of the things that we do here that I like is it creates a reading list. 
And what a reading list does is you have a web page, but you can't finish it at that time. You put it into your reading list. Then when you open up Edge on another program through your account, it'll be in the reading list and you can go straight back to that page. You don't have to remember the address or anything like that. All right, here, the star, that's pretty familiar. That's been around for a while. That's when you want to add the web page to your, fav your favorites, like your bank account or like I have the school address or my um, distance education classes. I have those as favorites, so I don't have to type the whole address. And this is a really cool feature. This is the reading pane. It's not available for all websites. As you can see, this one is a website that doesn't really have any readable information. It's pretty much all hyperlinks. But this is really cool um, because I read a lot of different things. I don't just read the El Paso Times. I read the Washington Times. I read uh, Wall Street Journal. And one of the things that gets distracting is there's always pictures and icons all over the place. If you change to reading mode, it gets rid of that and you're just left with the text. I love that new feature. So let's take a look at a couple of these features. All right, so first let me show you how Cortana can help me. Instead of, for instance, I like to cook and mess around once in a while with recipes, I'm going to see if Cortana can find a recipe for me. So all I'm going to do is click in there, and this time I'm going to ask her the question verbally as opposed to typing it in. So I'm going to click. Okay, so then I'm going to click the microphone. Yes. Chili recipe. Okay, a couple of seconds later, I have a wide variety of chili recipes in this website. So here's another example that happens to me quite often, especially because I have a couple of people in my house, four different people putting dishes and measuring things away. So when I try to find something, of course, I can't find it. So one of the things that often happens is in the directions for these recipes, it will tell us, you know, how much of something, a cup of this, half a cup of that, teaspoon of that and I don't have that particular measurement. So I could ask Cortana to help me with that. Let's say it asks for a tablespoon. I don't have a tablespoon, but I have a teaspoon. So I'm going to ask Cortana, how many teaspoons in a tablespoon? How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? One U.S. tablespoon is three U.S. teaspoons. Fantastic. So now I need to add three teaspoons, and it'll be the equivalent of one tablespoon. So I have my surface set up right there in the kitchen. I showed you how you can do the touch screen, and it's really easy to do a lot of things and get information very quickly and also without using my hands to type it in. All right, let's do a sharing example. First of all, we'll do this. I found a website, just the positive and negative effects of social media. I do some social media in my classes, let them know, yes, smartphones and iPads and all that are fantastic, but there are societal things that you need to keep track of, especially related to etiquette, in my opinion. Here's an example of that reading. So here's the article I want, but notice there's pictures, there might be icons, there might be uh, lots of things on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the screen to reading mode. So that's the icon on the top right, the picture of the book. There we go, and I'm going to click on that book. Okay, if you'll notice, see how it reformatted the page? And now I can just read my article without all of the other distracting where the text wraps around partly here, partly there. Now it's just nice, easy reading mode. All right, so I think my friends should know some of that. My friends quite often don't use social media correctly, in my opinion, uh, or my children, so I want to share that. So I'm going to click also on the top right on my sharing button. Okay, so first thing you need to know here is you see I have a Facebook icon. You can only use the sharing feature in social media that you have installed that app on that computer. So Twitter's available, uh, Facebook is available, a couple of the other social media apps, but they must be installed on the computer in order to show up on that menu. So I've already installed Facebook, so now it's available for me to share this web page to my Facebook account. Okay, so we click on Facebook. I'm going to have to log in. Oh, it's already there. All right. I'll just tell them this is a test. Doing 
a show on computer train. But a good read for some of you. And I'll mention one of my friends in the post. OK, so then I'll post it. And so now it's just like if I had gone to Facebook and put the link there. If I log into my Facebook account, that post will be there. All of my friends can see it. And depending on the settings, some of their friends can see it. So really easy to share things. I'll do another example with mail. So one of the things that's coming up for me is finals are next week. So after that, don't look for me. I'm going to be probably on the golf course somewhere. So I found this uh, Tea Time website. And what I want to do is I want to let my wife know that at this time, for the rest of the day, I'm going to be unavailable. I don't want to post that on Facebook. I want to send it directly to her. The other thing I want to show you is I want to call her attention to one of the specific times. So another icon up there on the top right. This is called Web Notes. Basically changes your mouse into a writing utensil. Or if you have a touch screen, you can use your finger. Okay, on the left you see that we have some colors. You have a pen, you can have a marker, you can do a race, you can actually create a little text box, quite a few different things. So I'm just going to do the regular pen. I don't want to go too early, that would be way too cold. So I'll probably go about the 8 o'clock tea time. So I'm going to circle that. Okay, so web notes I can write directly on the web page. Then I'm going to share it. So I'm going to click on that share icon again. And this time, I'm going to use mail. So when you want to share the web page through an email account, you can easily go to the mail share icon. And we're going to add an account. So in this example, I'll add my Gmail account, because that's the one that I usually use to send things to my wife. So notice that you can do others. There's Yahoo. There's other ones, Google. You have some of the most common ones. Okay, so here all you're doing is recording your account inside Edge, and it'll be able to be used uh, every time you want to share something. And you can actually have different accounts to share things from different accounts. Okay, so then we'll click Allow to allow it to use my settings. And now we're set up. Okay, so now. I have the web page. I use web notes to circle what I wanted my wife to particularly see. Now I'm going to share that web page with her directly. So now we just type in her address, put a little uh, message in here. Not that one. Please do not look for me on this day or time for approximately six hours, mostly because I'll probably be looking for my golf balls. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, ep episode of Computer Train. We can, we're going to continue our march in Windows 10. There's a lot of other features I'm still going to show you. We've installed Microsoft Office 2016, which, at, which came with a bunch of new tools also. So I hope to see you next time on another episode of Computer Train. Mm -hmm.